Hello and welcome back to another GCSE revision video. Now guys, this lesson is actually highly requested by those of you that follow this channel and are studying Jekyll and Hyde, which is one of my personal favorite novels. Lots of you guys are absolutely convinced that the theme of duality, the dual nature of man, could well be the question that comes up in this year's GCSE exams. And lots of you have asked, if this theme comes up, if duality comes up, which is arguably the most important theme in this novella, what could you write about? So guys, you asked, I listened, and in this lesson, what I want to show you guys is how to craft a perfect essay and a perfect response on the theme of duality. And by the way, guys, this is to do with Stevenson's message and the novel itself. Therefore, if you're studying AQA, Edexcel, whichever syllabus, the points that are raised for this essay are equally relevant regardless of your syllabus, okay? Ties to Stevenson's message and the key issues that happen within this novel. Now, guys, Let's begin by talking about the theme of duality. And actually, before I even begin, guys, don't forget that tomorrow I will be having a one-off Jekyll and Hyde GCSE revision lesson going over how to write a model response for this year's GCSE exams, how to craft a perfect response um, in connection to last year's 2023 exams. And within this lesson, I'm gonna go into lots of detail as to how to write uh, a great essay in your upcoming exams. And of course, also context key themes to remember and so on, okay? So of course, make sure you sign up. Now, let's get to it. The theme of duality. I believe this is a central theme within this novel. What do you need to do in order to do really well in these exams if this theme comes up? Remember to always begin any essay. And of course, this essay on duality or dual nature of man with a thesis statement. You need to make it really clear what Stevenson's message is and why he's using this theme, okay? Now, remember that Stevenson uses this theme, duality or the dual nature of man, to demonstrate that we all have, all of us, regardless of class, regardless of gender or whatever, we all have an immoral and a moral side, a civilized and an uncivilized side. We are both human, but we also are very advanced forms of animals. In other words, within all of us, we have a good side and an evil side, and we need to accept it. We all have a duality that resides within us. And rejecting this rather than accepting it is what leads to monstrosity and the tragedy that is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It was Jekyll's own refusal to accept this duality that led to the monstrosity that was Mr. Hyde, to the monstrous creation that was Mr. Hyde, and ultimately to Jekyll's own untimely death, okay? And hence, Stevenson is using this theme, okay? This theme is really, really important because this is Stevenson's way of criticizing what he saw as very restic restrictive and hypocritical religious and class ideals that existed in Victorian society. Remember that. During the Victorian era, when this novel was written, this was a time where lots of Victor Victorians deeply believed that it was possible to be really religious, to be really moral and completely good, like Jesus Christ himself, to not have any evil side. And of course, if you're that pure and that moral, you're gonna go to heaven. But Stevenson used this theme to demonstrate that's not possible. Now, actually, if you try and separate this side within you, okay, this animalistic side, this uncivilized side with your good side, and you try and reject and act like it doesn't exist, this will lead to tragic outcomes. That's in your thesis statement. Now, I would like to recommend in terms of your paragraphs, begin how structurally Stevenson introduces Hyde before Jekyll. Start your first winning paragraph with a focus on Mr. Hyde's character who was introduced to us first before Dr. Jekyll. And make this point in your first paragraph, okay? In your first grade nine paragraph. Remember that it's significant and it's key that Mr. Hyde is introduced First, as Stevenson uses the novel structure, remember that we meet Hyde first, or we hear of what he does first in chapter one when he's trampling calmly on the girl. And Stevenson does this, he uses this novel structure to show how Hyde is the ultimate expression, the purest expression of Jekyll's dark and hidden side. And in fact, this dark and hidden side that's in Jekyll is actually within all of us, okay? So remember that when Victorian readers were reading this, they were quite horrified. They were like, oh my gosh, 
do I have this animalistic side? And Stevenson was saying, yes, you do, okay? And actually Hyde is the ultimate reflection of this dark side that resides in someone who is highly respected and upper class like Dr. Jekyll. And of course, Hyde's cruelty is frightening more so because it's not only in upper class people and upper class respected members of society like Jekyll, but actually it's in all of us, okay? So we are all animalistic. Now the quotations which you want to use to demonstrate this point is, remember that of course in chapter one, we learned that tr uh, Hyde trampled calmly on this little girl, okay? So this oxymoron Moron illustrates his animalistic nature and his predatory nature. Equally, he is described in very Darwinian terms as being ape-like, okay? And the third quotation, of course, which demonstrates just how evil and how frightening and how much of an outsider he is, is when we learn that he had this Satan signature on his face, okay? And of course, you want to make this a context point for your AO3 marks. Remember that Charles Darwin came out with this theory called evolution, okay? So, or rather the theory of evolution, the origin of species. In other words, what he said, which went directly in contrast to what the Bible said, okay? The Bible in Genesis says, we are formed perfectly, okay? God made the world in six days and took a rest on seventh day, okay? And we're all formed perfectly. Charles Darwin said, no, that's not the case, actually. We evolved. We evolved from animals, okay? Over thousands of years, meaning we at heart as human beings, we're a type of animal. We're just maybe a more evolved type of animal as opposed to maybe apes, okay? So make that point really, really clear. Hyde is a clear representation of Charles Darwin's theories. Again, which many Victorians, when they're reading this novel, and also when they learnt of this theory, were very scandalized because it went directly against religious ideas and religious faiths. That's your first winning paragraph on the theme of duality, okay? Now your second point, of course, is now you then contrast Dr. Jekyll, this very highly evolved man. He's rich, he's wealthy and very respected. What do you say when you're thinking about the theme of duality? Talk about the fact that Dr. Jekyll is used by Stevenson and used this term. He is used as a tragic figure because he refuses to accept his duality, okay? He refuses to accept that he has actually an evil side. He has an animalistic side and animalistic desires. And he is used by Stevenson, the character of Dr. Jekyll, okay? He is used himself by uh, Stevenson to criticize what Stevenson saw, saw as Victorian religion, okay? Very restrictive Victorian religious ideas. You have to be perfect. And also Stevenson criticized restrictive class ideals, okay? Also remember that the Victorian gentleman during this period had to be very upstanding. He had to even dress in a certain way. He only had to, he could only associate with other rich Victorian gentlemen. He can never associate himself with working class people or even go anywhere near to working class districts. Stevenson was criticizing this, okay? Through using the very sympathetic character of Dr. Jekyll. And of course, Jekyll, as a result of these really restrictive ideals, was forced to hide his darker side and hence he created a separate being. But of course, Stevenson teaches us that we learn that it's impossible to be completely pure, okay? Jekyll creates Hyde and separates him entirely in order so that he as Jekyll can be completely poor, but, but that is impossible, okay? And he starts transforming into Hyde without even being able to control those transformations as the novel progresses. Now, the quotations you want to use when you're demonstrating this point to do with Dr. Jekyll and this tragic refusal to accept this dark side is firstly, um, you know, when he's described as a large, smooth-faced man. This is a really nice contrast to, of course, how Hyde is described as shorter, less evolved, and ape-like. This is significant because it ties to a theory at the time, which was put forward by a guy called Cesar Lombroso, okay, an Italian um, man. He came up with this idea that you could tell somebody's soul and the quality of their character by just looking at their face, right? So Stevenson was playing with this by describing high, uh, Jekyll's appearance as a large, smooth-faced man. Oh, if he's tall, if he's very smooth-faced, that means he must be a really good and moral guy, right? And of course, our expectations are turned on our heads, okay? And of course, also when uh, Utterson is talking about Hyde, 
we learn that there came a blackness in Dr. Jekyll's eyes, okay? And obviously this is already hinting at this dual nature within Jekyll. And of course, at the end, in chapter 10, Dr. Jekyll finally um, accepts his duality, but he does so too late. And he acknowledges that man is not truly one, but truly two. Now, remember, of course, what Stevenson is trying to say is that what we need to do is accept and tame this evil side within us rather than reject it or try to separate it the way Jekyll did. And what you want to tie this to is a direct discussion of the theme of the dual nature of man, okay? Of course, Stevenson is using this theme to demonstrate, to not only criticize very restrictive Victorian ideals, but to also demonstrate the importance of us taming and accepting this dark nature within us. Finish off your winning paragraph in your third paragraph by talking about the character of Mr. Utterson. Mr. Utterson is really interesting because firstly, remember that his work, he's a lawyer, okay? And he's, who was the last reputable acquaintance in the lives of downgoing men. So Mr. Utterson's profession is important because it's based on solving problems caused when rich men indulge in their dark and secret desires. So Utterson in his profession daily comes up against this duality. In fact, when people like Jekyll, when people like Lanyon and so on, and even Enfield indulge in their desires, they have to be rich because they need to afford someone like Mr. Utterson as the lawyer. He then solves their problems, okay? So Utterson um, is used as a really interesting figure who comes across this duality and his profession is based on solving the issues that happen when they indulge in the dark sides. But equally, Utterson not only recognizes this duality in his work, when he sees Jekyll's dead body, once he and Paul break into his lab, okay? So he recognizes this duality, okay? However, what's really ironic is that even if Mr. Utterson recognizes this dual nature in his friend, Dr. Jekyll, he recognizes this dual nature in his work as a lawyer, the irony is that Utterson never accepts his own duality, okay? He himself also represses his duality. And hence, he never learns the lesson of this tragedy. And maybe at the end of this novella, we're left wondering, will this also happen to Utterson? Will this also happen to people like Enfield? Because this acceptance never is um, happens, okay? The only person that accepts this duality is Dr. Jekyll. Now, we learn this refusal to accept his duality even through the first chapter when we learn that uh, Mr. Utterson was austere, so he was very repressed. But equally, we learned that he struggled with himself before he broke into Dr. Jekyll's lab, okay? Why this is important is because we can see here that Utterson also refuses this duality that resides in him. However, he recognizes it once he sees Dr. Jekyll's dead body, of course, he's in Hyde's form and he notices and recognizes this body of a self destroyer. And guys, what you want to do with this um, third point, you want to tie it into the contextual idea and the idea that there was another man who came out at this time during the Victorian era. Okay, it was a time of great scientific progress. In addition to Darwin, right? There was a guy who was known as the godfather of the school of psychology called Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud came up with this theory that we have a very civilized side, right? Our minds are like the tip of an iceberg, or rather our minds are like an iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is this civilized side we present to everyone, like Dr. Jekyll. However, the vast part of our minds is what he called our id. This is our uncivilized side, our animalistic side, our repressed desires. And psychological problems emerge and come around because of us repressing and trying to reject this part of us, okay? And of course, you can also see that Utterson himself also represses and refuses to accept his id, okay? So guys, as I mentioned, if the theme of dual nature of man comes up, Make sure you start with this thesis statement, then dedicate your first paragraph to Hyde, then your second paragraph to Dr. Jekyll, and your third paragraph to Mr. Artisan Okay, And as I said, guys, tomorrow I'll be running a one-off Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde GCSE masterclass. So make sure you join in from 5 p.m., okay? Thanks so much, guys, for watching.